What's up, what's up, YouTube? Today's video is going to be a bit special and different from what I usually post on the channel. It's going to recap the tournament run that I had at the last seasonal tournament last weekend, where I did end up getting second place and won three and a half thousand dollars. You can watch this whole tournament run at, on YouTube. It's all been streamed on the Legends of Runeterra channel. There should be a link like somewhere up here or you can click if you want to see the full thing. But this video today is going to be an analysis video, uh, reviewing my gameplay critically, looking if I actually played correctly and what I maybe could have improved. It's going to be very educational, very strategic, and a lot of advice and takeaways. And with me was Alan ZQ, one of the sharpest analytical minds and one of the best players in the game as well. Um, we did this live on the Twitch stream right after the tournament. And yeah, you can review all of this right here. We started off with discussing the lineup idea, the lineup theory, then um, moved forward to the pig ban phase. And we'll start right away with the first series in which I faced Ucham Protein. You can see the bracket right here. This is where we started. We had a long way to go. Like I said, I'll link this video for the full official broadcast somewhere. And I'll also link you the deck list that I play. You can find them in my Mobilitics pro profile. You will find the link below. And from now on, it's just educational gameplay analysis. Enjoy. I hope you guys learned something. Is it the Mustache? Who knows? What made you bring the that lineup? Um, again, it was like a last second call, like literally a couple minutes before registration was closed. The idea was basically, it was much harder to scout the opponents this time. Everyone is aware of API tracking at this point and like everyone conceals their mobilitics, Runeterra AR, everything. No one plays ranked, everyone only plays uh, scrims on... That's why I have one hidden account to prac yeah. the practice that yeah. no one knows. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like almost everyone does. Um, I still expected that my first round opponent goes for a very aggressive type of strategy, like Ucham Protein that was, um, and probably for a strategy that would hard counter my initial open rounds lineup. And it is easy to counter. I played um, Anivia, Lee Sin, Severed Demacian open rounds. But why? Okay, well, hold up. Before we hop into the game, why Lee? Why Lee Zoe? Um, I just think that that's like... Uh, I Okay, so I basically expected my first round opponent to go for something like this, and my second round opponents both were like Gangplank, Sejuani, Lee Sin, two tricks, let's call it. And I was pretty sure the, th mm -hmm. the third deck is like Sever Demacia or Ezreal Draven. And um, I, like this time, it, th this was the first time where no matter what lineup you picked, there was always like a somewhat common deck that would hard counter you. Mm -hmm. Like this, just because the meta is so polarized and so wide. So I tried to go for something like a mixed strategy where of course the matchups of Lee Sin and Lulu Z are often opposite so that I can try to get an edge in pick ban phase, like in banning mm -hmm. and then in queuing up the right deck. And yes. Lulu Z was just like, I was also expecting the in the further rounds to run into a lot of like plunder plus um, Azir or deep like a lot of rather, like a lot of counter picks. And I just thought that people kind of forgot that Lulu Z is actually really good into a meta that does not run too much as Draven or TF Swain. Are, weren't you worried that uh, you're gonna lose by because you don't uh, get a correct uh, attack token with Lulu Z? Because obviously if you don't get attack token on free, you basically uh, lose like 20% win rate on with Lulu Z. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but still, like, the overall stats are fine. Like, it's a deck that can compete with everything else. And in this case, it had it was banned the first, first four rounds, and uh, it won in the fifth, so 100%. Yeah, but banner. I think you sh like people shouldn't be, like, they were misbanning. I, mean, I think people were just unaware of the matchup, and they were just banning it because uh, they were unaware. Like, I ran into a separate problem because I brought a deck to bait ban in the open rounds, and people just didn't ban it because they, they banned the deck that they were not aware, like, how to play against. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that could be the case that they just banned the deck that they didn't encounter or they didn't practice against and they didn't know how to approach it. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Like, I wasn't super happy about it. Like I said, I literally locked this in one and a half minute before mm -hmm. registration closed. But I was fairly set on, on Sever, Demacia and Lee, like a mixture of comfort and like well-rounded and it's probably fine into the meta. 
And I felt like if I complement that with Lulu Z, like Lulu Z is good into everything that hard counters Lee, into a zero Relia, TK Raka, that type of stuff, scouts. It outraces all of that. Therefore, I felt like I, w I never lost by default. And you had one opponent that brought like Draven uh, and like uh, Severe uh, Damasha, and yeah. they banned your like they, they had you like both of you should have banned their Severe Damasha, obviously. Yeah. And he banned your Lulu Z, and he like considering that he knew that what you're gonna ban, he had two favorite matchups going into the Lulu, Lulu Z, and he banned actually his best matchup, which was mm -hmm. kind of like again I assume that he just didn't know the matchup tables, and that that was like the issue for a lot of people probably. I definitely agree with you. I was a bit surprised by by everyone banning that. Like I think the the meta predictions were paying. Off because everyone kind of at least felt like they had to ban Lulu Z and I could play the broken deck a lot. That's basically the idea mm -hmm. behind the lineup. It could have gone wrong. Everyone I talked to in prep, like three or four players in the top cut as well, they all felt like it's going to be matchup roulette. It's always like the third deck or a second and third deck they bring. There's a realistic chance that they just auto lose because they run into hard counters. It was the same for me and I'm just glad it paid off. It's like find anything better. So pretty straightforward. I expect him to ban Lulu Z. Then the worst matchup for me is Scouts. Yeah, probably. The, uh, is the, like it depends. Uh, does he run uh, repost in the, the scouts? I think one repost and the stony suppressor version. So it beats. Oh, if he runs stony suppressor, then yeah. Yeah, it beats uh, Lee harder than Azir does, and it also um, is better into Sivir than Azir. So mm -hmm. I, I thought like expecting him to ban Lulu Zed, which is the correct thing. I thought this was straightforward. This was like the one time I did not flip a coin because Akshan Sivir is just a better deck. Do you run the palms in the Lee? Um, yeah, I run two palms, two wells. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he didn't open with Lurk. He needed to scoop your Azir Irelia. Uh, no, wait, hold on. You don't run Azir Irelia. Uh, he runs Azir Irelia. Mm -hmm. Never mind. I thought uh, for a second you have one. I'm surprised yeah, you mulligan away uh, Protector here. I think you keep the Protector in opening when you have Treasure Secret turn one. Um, yeah, I don't hate it. I do run seven two drops and like uh, six one drops. The Flea Feather Tracker is also like a very good pickup here. I could see it both ways. Mm -hmm. well, the thing is, so like the protector like doesn't allow opponent to attack and proc like if, if they have dice, if they have uh, like they, they need to take a swing. So basically, protector allows you to proc the mm -hmm. uh, proc uh, severe easier and it uh, doesn't allow opponent to push any damage, which gives you an extra turn, basically. Yeah. That's why I think like Protector is super neat in this matchup. But with this like, kind of opener, like it looks like free B already. Yeah. I mean, I always open pass here and round pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you have also very good hand. Yeah, yeah. I can't complain at all this game. So next turn we are probably just opening with the tracker into the hunter, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. Actually, you have eight mana next turn. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe whether... open. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah, to to set up a rally like uh, whoopsie. We could we could open like um, the two thing, right? Then merciless hunter and then keep rally mana open. Uh, but I think I like this. Uh, like uh, here, even if, if he go like what what's the worst case he can do? Like for the turn five. Like if he passed on the turn two, he his best play turn two was uh, summon the unit. So he and he top deck dies, right? So at this point, mm -hmm. you know he has a bunch of free drops in hand, obviously, because mm -hmm. no one drops. He could have been holding on Dune Keeper for this turn, for like the defensive turn five. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know at this point his spell is either free drops if he doesn't play Dune Keeper here or a bunch of recalls. So like you can obviously here expect the recall from the, by with the lead and follow, right? So probably you are pulling with the yeah i like the the pull here mm -hmm. but i think i would have uh, yeah yeah definitely very nice pull and if like and you have the grappling hook that's what i was thinking yeah exactly i had a consideration where i pre-commit like it's for example shaped stone on silver then grappling hook with this um because it beats twin but of course it's worse into lead and follow I mean, you can just rally, like, exactly. to be honest, at this turn, and, like, this is way stronger because you push damage, you level up severe, and the opponent has to waste time on developing next turn, and he can't really 
Uh, yeah, he can't really win from this spot. Like when you when opponent's best play on turn is summon five two to go face, it's and you have and you don't break, it's yeah, it's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, question is sharp side or keep rally mana open. Set him to eleven. Opponents on I one. I think it's no sharp side. I I mean I think it's just sharp side. Like honestly, like what's what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, twin disciplines defensively, I suppose. Um, yeah, but if you maintain the, you may like uh, next turn. What what he can do next turn? If uh, hold up, if you play dude here, a sharp side, hit twin discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you keep your hawk. He 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 said six mana. What's what's the next turn uh, play for him? Yeah, it, it's true. Like it's also a, a winning line, definitely the sharp side. Uh, my thought was, if I rally here, I force the Azir to block anyway. I keep the sharp side. Yeah, but he he still can uh, twin discipline. And he still can uh, stay like uh, kill your two two and uh, just stay at two HP and try to win next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fair point. I do think I'm in a very pos winning position then with no spell mana. That him having six mana left, uh, but I, I see yeah, the but point. But the sharp set would have achieved the same. Like yeah. you see the point. Like uh, and you don't lose the action and you can still rally next turn and you keep your hawk alive. So you basically have two more units. Oh, how and does you it say, survive you though? Uh, uh, it goes to oh yeah, it doesn't. You're right. Uh, but still, you keep him action and you keep one more mana open. Mm -hmm. And you can rally, like, he has to pop, like, he has six mana next turn. W he can't open pass, he develops your rally. Uh, you can summon the 5 2. If he tries to attack into 5 2, you just rally after attack. If he pass, then you rally and attack into him. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And this way, you just keep one more unit, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So Cataclysm is a pretty solid draw. With the sharp oh, yeah. side, I can check for for combat tricks. Also, you get the five two this turn uh, for free from the uh, from the palace or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. Here the question is like because I have a pretty sweet line with Cataclysm plus gra grappling hook in case my opponent tries defensive stuff. Keep in mind there was one homecoming, but no, like there was no other fast speed answer. So if I remove both units and I get the open attack, it's guaranteed lethal. I, I would definitely go for Azir here. Like, he can't do anything. Yeah. Like, if he tries to save it, he loses. If he doesn't, he, like, what what's the worst case scenario for you? Second Azir? Like, worst uh, case yeah. scenario? Something along those lines. A rally end to flawless to it, but I don't really care, yeah. And yeah, but if you play second hook. Azir, you're just yeah. grappling hook, right? Exactly, so. yeah. And now he just yeah loses because of no units. Yeah. And the way I set this up, like if I don't have to invest the sharp side, I do get the charger. The I mean, why do you why time. why block at all? Like next turn. That's actually a good point. I could have just. You have open skipped. attack with uh, four units. Yeah. Like he needs to have homecoming. And you don't have to even open attack. You can start with the five two, and you can play grappling hook on top of that next turn. Yeah, yeah, to that's remove true. a blocker. It, it would have already been guaranteed uh, lethal here. Well, no, ho yeah. homecoming actually. Um, I was creating the sever level up, but there's really no point to it. Like at oh. that point, this is pretty much over. I mean, here, like if he homecomings, then you don't have lethal, and uh, if you go with the five two, you have pretty much like what can ha happen? What he'll do? Like play uh, Doomkeeper. He didn't have Doomkeeper. He would need to top the kit, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. But I think this is and always even, lethal. Mm -hmm. I can always grappling hook pre combat. I can summon the other charge. Yeah, exactly. And this way you can miss to the homecoming. And you know that his hand was awkward, so he can definitely could have a uh, homecoming because based on how it played off. And you know he didn't have do uh, Doomkeeper, so the he could have oh. had the punish for the play you did, but he couldn't like the punish uh, for the non open attack would be the play that he would need to top deck. Yeah, my bad. I just remembered my first round opponent actually went full aggro and played zero homecomings. This one only had triple defiant dance. I still have the screenshots of the deck list. Ah, so he couldn't. Okay, so he yeah, couldn't. So this was uh, guaranteed lethal definitely. already. But I still All agree right, with you that I should not have um, taken the block with a sever because if my opponent uses the shape stone there and I have to sharp side, that means I don't get the open focus yeah, yeah. speed. Dude, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, but that was pretty straightforward. Like, the, the attack just wins. I think you had... I don't know if it was you, but someone uh, lost, I don't know, lost a game or series because 
I, I think it was I, we were watching you, did you on the g series two that you didn't set up. You had guaranteed lethal, but you pl didn't play protector to set up uh, open attack with the severe. Did you lose a game with the to the crescent stun with the severe? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, that might be a thing, yeah. I, I remember once I wasn't sure if I should override the Warlord's Horde to attack with six units or oh, not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had gu guaranteed lethal next turn if you did play correctly a turn before. Okay. Do you mean even though, like, knowing all of the answers my opponent could have had? Yes, have... yes. Okay. I Without hindsight. Yeah, I'm always talking about hindsight. Yeah. I never, like, I never go with the play. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not Twitch chat. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, this one was, th this game was very interesting. I felt like I played fine overall, but pretty sure I didn't play perfectly. I feel like th this matchup is so complex. So my, while my opponent does have mana for combat tricks, I really like this trade. Yeah, definitely a solid one. I mean, you have double eye <laughs> staring at your opponent and the lean hand as a removal. Yeah, Again, he doesn't run homecoming, so... No potential triple eye, yeah. Actually, Samonic Eye is better here because you still have mana for Pale. Uh, why for the why go for the regular Eye instead of Samonic? Um, because I wanted to keep the other gifts open for potential Infernum or Severum. Is there a reason why uh -huh. why summoning is much better? Can't really think of one. I guess this is better because you can bluff Pale. Yeah, and he would, could attack only with the Azir. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is, was better, probably. Yeah, I, I thought this turn was already pretty tough. I know I'm playing Sonic Wave. The question is, what do I pull? Uh, I think you just pull the um, the student and you keep one uh, two one uh, in the back. Are we that afraid of play dances? We're at 16 HP. Like, oh, my opponent doesn't really have any setup, no Deus. I mean, do you need to rush him? I guess, what's the worst case? What, he's gonna recall and the blade dance? Then you'll have a blocker. So I suppose you could attack, chipping out the damage. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there is a point into attacking uh, Azir. In this matchup, you don't go for the Azir kill because it's just too... You have to commit too many resources. I think it's just better to outstall opponent. Yeah. Uh, um, and just uh, drain him out of the um, blade dances. That's how I approach this. Okay. I did end up going for Azir because of one reason, and that was... Um, like, lead and follow slows down my opponent insanely. He's going to have to play the blade dance with no... Um, Azir on board and then use next turn to redevelop Azir. If they have any type of combo trick only, then Lee Sin is gonna threaten to remove Azir without any attack buffs, basically. Yeah, but with, you can't assume that Lee will stick. You have to assume that the opponent will just defy and dance your uh, Lee. Um, yeah, that's a fair point. You yeah. don't have deny. And like, the thing is, is, as, is this Azir threatening you anyhow? You have double eye, you have way to proc this, we have to wait to proc the eye multiple times. You are you have, you can draw deep met uh, with the pod, you can just outgrade opponent. And like, if you're gonna com uh, start committing resources to your... Uh, start committing resources to the to killing uh, Azir here, you just tap out of the mana for the next turn. And you have limited stuff you that you can do next turn. I mean, I do have gifts and pay... Uh... I can decide whether or not I, I pop a crescendum, which I don't really like, but I get the point, that's for sure. At that point, I felt like making my opponent spend one, like, spend mana slows down their development, and at the same time, using combat tricks defensively is also a combat trick that has not hit me offensively later on. Mm -hmm. But um, I can see, like, yeah, I think sparring both lines were fine. Yeah. Sparring student is a big threat as well, and we'll see that in a a bit later on, like, sp the sparring students were fucking <laughs> so annoying, so enormous, and definitely it's might be worth getting rid of it. Yeah, maybe Does I opponent run Absolver? Their list, yeah. One off Absolver. Mm -hmm. So and that's another uh, thing that would, would be worth to consider the, dealing with the student because of the Absolver. Mm -hmm, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, here I wasn't sure if I... Like, I wanted to find a window to play Lee and threaten as Did you play Lee Azir? before he played Irelia? Yeah, I think so. You don't play Lee when uh, he has 4 mana. You just pass here. Because if you play Lee and he defy and dance, it's really bad for you. Yeah, but that always hits me, doesn't it? Is it really that no, because, important? No, but he doesn't get... Yeah, he doesn't get the blade dance. Uh, he doesn't... Like, if he attacks now, are you sad? He can't really attack into you now with the students. And mm -hmm. if he defy and dance, then he can actually attack with both of them. 
right? That's actually a fair point, yeah. It's probably better to pass letter point play Aurelia than play Lee. Like, because what, what, like, uh, how, uh, if you pass here, nothing really bad happens for you, right? You just play the next turn, you can go into Crescentum, uh, and you can play, um, you can, no, you can, you have actually sick turn next turn, because what you can do, you can play a Moon Weapon, play Pod, and play Crescentum. Yeah, that's one if way you of just doing. take a pass. But then I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if pass and end run, that's true. Yeah, yeah I was too exactly. focused on the idea of Lee Sin threatening Azir, I think. I might have like tunnel visioned a bit too much there. Like he said three cards. Like at this point, you have to assume that he has, at, at, at worst case scenario for you, two blade dance. Like double, yeah, yeah. Like, Whatever it's yeah, obviously called. in this case you you like he didn't have defendants. Good for you. But if he has, you put yourself in the worst spot. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It was like an unnecessary risk. So opponents out of combat tricks. I, I use these opportunities to like block with the eyes without having to worry about shape stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You want to utilize the eyes asap. Yeah, the only one is. What, I, what I... if you take a one block with the? <clears throat> No, he always has to attack here. Yeah. So the Dragonics always will collect the value. Could have blocked with the eye again, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I... you definitely block here, no? Yeah. You didn't proc the eye for the next turn. I guess yeah. you don't have to because you are gonna get the value with the dragon on the defensive turn again yeah. when he attacks. Uh, so, like, blocking here is supposed probably the correct play. Yeah. Not blocking. That was my idea, but also like later on there's a high likelihood I never get another block with the eye because of my opponent having shaped stone and twin mana. Why? Like, do you really care about having a later three eyes on the board? You don't have board space for the, all the dragon links. You don't care if one of them dies. Yeah, also true. Um, also, you have pod coming down soon, so you actually want to lose an eye later on. But keep in mind, like, Gifts is also amazing for both Infernum and uh, Severum here. Because at this point I don't have Zenith. I might need it as Infernum, but of course Pot can tutor Zenith. You want to close the game for some reason really fast. Why don't just outgrind him? You have really good outgrind hand. Yeah, it ended up with an outgrind. You don't kill Azir here, right? You go for Irelia every time. Um, I think I went for Azir, to be honest. With the dice on board, I think it's Irelia always. Yeah, I can see like, it. Like... Like I said right away, like I might be overvaluing Azir in this matchup. It felt fine, Aurelia was the f kind of far from flipping, if I recall correctly, but then again, opponent has four cards, nine mana available this turn. Um, yeah, this was... Like, okay, no, wait, Aurelia was not far from flipping. How much was she on? He attacked I one, two... I think 11. She should yeah. be leveling this turn. Okay, yeah, then, then I was talking nonsense. Yeah, it might have been better to pick up Aurelia. Do I hush? Yeah. You won't have okay. a better hush than here. I ended up with a line that I thought was pretty cool, which is... Hush? I mean, the problem. there is a problem with hush. Because he took a pass last turn. What, what's your read on the three cards that he has? I would put him on the lead and follow. And he can go for the lead and follow on Irelia. He can blade dance twice more, and he can flip her. Like I would definitely put my opponent on lead and follow here. And that's a fair like, point. But again, he, he could have like if he had it, he could have played it here as well, right? It was pretty yeah, good spot yeah, yeah, for yeah. lead and follow because is... you lead and follow Azir, and then you replay it and you blade dance this turn, right? That's a very good point. Yeah. Um, I, I guess so... it might have been like combat tricks, and maybe a no defiant dance is not not in there. I or think shapes. Could... I would put him on shaped stone. It could be defiant as uh, the, from the top deck. Top like deck, I think yeah. one of the two, one of the two cards on the right is shaped stone and potentially top deck defiant dance. But if and uh, he didn't want to defiant dance uh, that board, perhaps he was maybe wanted to bait out Zenith Blade. But it could be like definitely double shaped stone. Uh, I it could be Doom Keeper. It could be just another blade dance, and he is waiting for the. Uh, you, it's not a blossoming blade, but it could be the two-one uh, blade dance. And he was here looking to top deck perhaps uh, a draw champion or uh, Azir to utilize that, or get a blade dance with Irelia later. Because this way, if he if he uses the two-one here, he he's uh, one off on Irelia leveling. And if you hold on to next turn, and if he uses following and do it, mm -hmm. then he can get a blade search from her. So it put him on like one blade search shaped stone. 
Shaped Stone plus... Like, I would definitely put him on Shaped Stone. One of mm -hmm. the two right cards. Yeah, I also ended up open attacking with Lee here, so no window to use Defiant Dance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. So the top deck didn't uh, matter. Yeah. Just a bit of Hollywooding with the eyes. And uh, wait, we were already here, right? I ended up using the Hush. Blah, blah, blah. Leaf yeah, yeah next turn you did. You did. And I thought that was, uh, like, what I did here was pretty neat because I did want the Dragonlings triggers for next turn, so I ended up playing Scattered Pot, tutoring Zenith, and I still need the second trigger, which was a gift from Beyond that I picked Severum. So I have my Overwhelm already, and I have a potential lifesteal for a, a turn where my opponent um, hits me a million times. Mm -hmm. And also the Lee Sin coming up, threatening to remove Aurelia. It's also possible that one of the cards is the second Aurelia, actually, now that I think about it. Like, he yes, didn't have. It could be second Aurelia. Yeah. Didn't have mana to play it at seven. Also, don't want to play it here while hushed, but one of the right cards could be second Aurelia, yeah. Mm hmm. Definitely. So, yeah, we got a sick board. We got. And yeah, like you said, there was a later drawn Defiant Dance. Yep. Yeah, chat, this is top 32. This is the first round I played. When my opponent tried to go all in on hard countering my open round lineup. If you top the here lead and follow, you could actually have lost. He could have, uh, like, mm -hmm. he could have one shot, uh, one shot you with the mm, lead and, uh, with the students. Because you would have gotten uh, two more blade dances and level up on Irelia and three uh, blade search. Uh, but blade Irelia, blade is hushed. Irelia is hushed. Doesn't matter. This yeah, time. but he can recall her. Like, he can lead and follow her and replay her. And he would get another. Oh. He would get two more following and do it. That's a that's a very good point. Yeah. Could have I mean, obviously that would need to be a top oh. deck because he, if he had it, he would have played it last turn. But still. True, but like after the defiance, he doesn't have mana anymore, right? For lead and follow, replay a rally. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about that. Like the turn, like the moment where he played, you mm -hmm. played whale. So this mm -hmm. is the moment where he had to done, do it. Yeah, true. Sure, yeah. It was definitely a win, though. But the, again, what do you do else if you don't hush here? Like, you, I don't think this is the spot where you play around it. This is not a good matchup, and like you have to uh, take risks. So I, I'm definitely down for hush. I'm just saying what could, like the worst case scenario, what could have happened. Mm -hmm. True. Second Defiant that was drawn later. Um, yeah, I think this is... Like, I need the double uh, Dragon Link trigger. And I think this is the one that makes most sense, easily, because I don't lose any mana. If I recall, I and bounce it back. Doesn't make sense, mechanically. Because I want to play Zoe this turn. Of course, Blade Dance still goes through. But I'm also quite fine with it. Uh, hold on, why did you re retreat uh, the Lee? Because I have missed the point. Um, because if I retreat an I, it just costs one mana more. Right? If yeah, I'm not what's, mistaken. what's the point? Hold on, but what's the point of retreating this here? You can just retreat mid combat, uh, like I, to just deny the damage. Uh, yeah, the the idea was to get Zoe on board and get a hit in, because at this point we had a read that one of the cards is probably a uh, shaped stone. Like, all uh -huh. of those were on the right uh, hand side, right? They were in hand for a yeah, while. Yeah, but why, why do you need uh, Zoe on board? Why not? It's it's a free hit. I don't think, like, isn't there, like, almost zero chance my opponent plays another Blade Dance this turn? That's also why I'm blocking with the Dragon Links. If I recall uh -huh. correctly, if, like, we had the read that the, the cards I were I mean, you don't care if he has another Blade Dance, you just let them go face. Yeah, exactly. And then isn't it better to... Like, I'm getting, like, with these two, I'm, I can just block them anyway. I get the free lifesteal, right? And then isn't it always better to just have Zoe on board and get the hit in and mm -hmm. get the invoke? Potentially Crash and Strike or Equinox? I mean, that play made no sense by opponent here. Like, if he doesn't have any plan here, I think. The Defiant Dance? Yeah. Probably just wanted to save Aurelia. Yeah, and perhaps. I mean, He's going there, into the... Yeah, there's a chance I don't get Dragonlings this turn because I only have three mana left. But of course, like once my opponent, once I lock on the retreat, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, I'm probably right. I would probably just keep my mana here open. Not honestly, I would not. I would not just play the. I would not play the retreat at all and just let it go. To be honest.
but then we don't get dragon links, right? Yeah, but you're at full HP and you have Severum. Does it really matter? Well, watch what happens this turn. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, my opponent has three cards in hand and Duet coming up. But keep in mind, we said like one card could be Irelia. Yeah, shape, number two. shape Stone or Irelia. Yep. This turn was actually crazy. I mean, you kind of want to bait out him to use Blade Search in this spot, even if yeah. it costs you a whale or something. I don't think you pass here. I think you take blocks. Yeah, I was considering it for exactly because that reason. Because you don't like want that. him, you don't want him to have uh, multiple blade surges because he can. Uh, basically, if he has four blade surges, he can push for twenty because mm -hmm. you don't have hash. Yeah, and well, you don't have palm. Yeah, it's pretty unlikely with. Uh three cards left in hand if we have a read that one is probably shaped stone but i i get the point yeah i mean all he needed is lead and follow there is no like if at mm -hmm. any point he top deck lead and follow he can have four blade surges in hand true true so i thought severum on the way was probably going to be good because i have mana for i mean you know he has shaped stone because of how the game went so far yeah yeah that's why i have uh, twin and, and bastion right and i'm kind of sure that my opponent would might greet the sparring student here, right? Already using up two of the blade surges, which means later on there is a mm -hmm. lot less threat. So I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure if this was the best play. I think even when rewatching it, this was fine. But having this at one HP is a bit. Sad I mean, he just shaped stone here, no? Um, like he ended up not having one... shaped stone apparently. Huh. Yeah. He... Might have been like double Aurelia after all, the thing like is, triple Aurelia. Uh -huh. Oh no! Okay, treasure seeker that was drawn at some point, and now I can I can already tell yes. you the mm -hmm. last card was Aurelia. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he, he should start with the. That's a mistake. He should start with the Aurelia spell, because now he can just play Aurelia spell and you can just ignore it completely. He already played Aurelia spell. That's a blade search in hand. If I wait, yeah, the blade search no, from no. the. I mean, no, no, I, I'm by my I read your spell. I mean the I read your signature spell. Oh, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. I get your point. Yeah, you you don't start with the, because this way, uh, you can deny like you can he can guarantee student hitting for the, uh, for the thirteen damage with the Irelias. Mm -hmm. Oh no, he couldn't because you can just block those two. Yeah, that's why I didn't like the swap uh, swapping with for the whale there too much. Yeah, it ended up working like... <laughs> I guess the whale was a bit of, of bait in the end. And yeah, here, man, man, man. I was so slow in thinking and I was already way in overtime, 20 seconds. I'm very glad I found the right blocks in like just the right time. Uh, oh yeah, he could have gotten lethal here. Yeah, he could have gotten lethal quite... Like, if I if I would have missed he it... He didn't put whale well in the correct uh, way here, yeah, he had lethal. All you needed to do is just mess up whale positioning. Yeah, they like blocking with a 1-3 because my opponent could have still, like, if I block with a 1-1, one, one, my opponent can still, of course, uh, swap the sparring student into an open space, push yep. a lot of damage. And here, like, getting the, the blade surge, trading the eye for, like, a lot of HP makes a lot of sense. But just block with the 1-1 one, one instead of 1-3. Uh, yeah, oh, I guess this saves you HP. Exactly. I guess this saves you HP. Okay. Then sparring student goes into an open slot. Man, imagine top deck defiant dance here, or lead and follow. You would just lose the game. Yeah, 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 for sure. Top deck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But this is like this matchup, right? <laughs> uh, you're you're uh, never entirely safe. I mean, what if you went for the star chart here first? Because what happens? He, uh, he can't really defiant this because then you don't have mana. But if you star chart first, then you could get moon silver. Worst case scenario, or you can get moon glow to play around uh, defiant dance. True, because, because what happens now, 
Well, he always he always pops the fire and dance immediately if I play Lee. Not necessarily right? because, because of the because of the deny. Uh, you could like the fire dance could enable your Lee. Okay, I I see the point, but like if the last card in hand is the defi fire dance and he knows I have Zoe's spell in hand, I think you have to go for it immediately. Did he know that you have Zenith Blade? Um, no. No. He Zenith knows that Blade you drew spell. Hit. He knew that you drew spell from the pot and you didn't play it, right? Yeah, that's true. It was so, a slow spell. And he knew I played Severum, so it's likely... No, he didn't know what which speed I drew. That's... Yeah, yeah, but you didn't play the card. You had mm -hmm. Lee on board. At this point, it's easy to deduce what, what the card is. True. So, like, he could have went for the, just the winning play, line uh, by passing here. That is assuming that I actually play Zenith Blade instead of Star Chart yeah, yeah, yeah. Glow, Which is also very legitimate. I was actually considering it for a second because I thought... Even if I only push like five damage here, I still probably hit lethal on the next swing. Not quite. But this is play. This is also better. Like Zenith the Blade is better against Object Twin mm -hmm. because it does. It makes his Irelia die uh, regardless because of the pale. Yeah, so yeah. So you yeah, played around the Twin and just didn't play around the uh, Defiant Dance, which is fine because he played one, and he didn't play single Twin if I recall. He played two Defiant Dances already. Oh, so even two. So that's that's even easier to make a call. Yeah, definitely correct overall, then. But just something uh, worth considering, right? Mm -hmm. True, true. In the future. But you, again, you were short on time, so like you didn't have that much time to, to think. Uh, why play Star Chart now? Why, um, why not play around Twin Discipline? Hey, good point. Yeah, no, Star Chart was a mistake. Um, I was uh, thinking about Serpent to pick off Sparring Student, but of course, if my opponent top decks Twin, that would be disastrous. And you can uh, play Star Shot after. I mean, you, I I know that you miss out on the snake, but again, uh, like opponent when opponent has one card and potentially two next turn, uh, like your Dragon Link is blocking opponent student regardless. Like it, sh it shouldn't be your concern. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I see the point. Like once I get into these twenty second time things, I do. I notice. I I it's play rough. Not worse. So it's maybe worth considering to play faster. Uh, like earlier so you yeah, don't yeah. get into those spots absolutely this is something i'm, I'm still like working on let's say oh yeah, that's a late top deck mm -hmm. deep okay. into nope that's was neat. perfect yeah imagine he got it last turn Damn. oh yeah yeah I, I never felt safe in this game until like this turn when i found nope if I it's a bad know. matchup and consider that and opponent only runs uh and he runs only what is it called uh free defendants no homecomings yeah, they, they, he had a hyper aggressive version, like 9 1 drops plus absolver, and therefore, like, no homecoming. I think in this meta, the cutting duos completely is the play in the Azir Aurelia. Yeah, I prepared an Azir Aurelia. I was considering bringing it as well. It had one green glade duo, if I recall correctly, but zero is also perfectly fine. Like, the thing is, in the current meta, you are like. Problem is you don't want to play two mana two one because you are most likely you, you, like you are queuing up into GP Sedge, you are queuing up into some Dravens, you are queuing up into some TF Swains. Against all of those units, duo is horrible. So many threats for them. And like there is not that much Severionia anymore. There isn't a lot of Lulu Z, you don't really need the elusive body in a lot of matchups. Yep. 